Søren Kierkegaard from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Søren Albo Kierkegaard, but usually anglicized as Kierkegaard, was a prolific 19th century Danish philosopher and theologian, born May 5, 1813, died November 11, 1855. Kierkegaard strongly criticized both the Hegelianism of his time and what he saw as the empty formalities of the Danish church. Much of his work deals with religious problems such as the nature of faith, the institution of the Christian church, Christian ethics and theology, and the emotions and feelings of individuals when faced with life choices. His early work was written under various pseudonyms who present their own distinctive viewpoints in a complex dialogue. Kierkegaard left the task of discovering the meaning of the works to the reader because the task must be made difficult, for only the difficult inspires the noble-hearted, he said. Subsequently, many have interpreted Kierkegaard as an existentialist, neo-orthodoxist, postmodernist, humanist, individualist, etc., crossing the boundaries of philosophy, theology, psychology, and literature Kierkegaard came to be regarded as a highly significant and influential figure in contemporary thought. Section 1. Life. Subsection 1.1. Early Years, 1813-1841. Søren Kierkegaard was born to an affluent family in Copenhagen, the capital of Denmark. His mother, Anne Søren's daughter Lund Kierkegaard, who had served as a maid in the household before marrying Søren's father, was an unassuming figure, quiet, plain, and not formally educated. She is not directly referred to in Kierkegaard's books, although she, too, affected his later writings. His mother died on July 31, 1834, age 66. His father, Michael Pedersen Kierkegaard, was a melancholic, anxious, deeply pious, and fiercely intelligent man. Convinced that he had earned God's wrath, he believed that none of his children would live past the age attained by Jesus Christ, that of thirty-three. He believed his personal sins, such as cursing the name of God in his youth and possibly impregnating Anne out of wedlock, necessitated this punishment. Though many of his seven children died young, his prediction was disproved when two of them surpassed this age. Søren and Peter Christian Kierkegaard, a Lutheran bishop several years Søren senior. This early introduction to the notion of sin and its connection from father and son laid the foundation for much of Kierkegaard's work, particularly fear and trembling. Despite his father's occasional religious melancholy, Kierkegaard and his father shared a close bond. Kierkegaard learned to explore the realm of his imagination through a series of exercises and games they played together. Kierkegaard's father died on August 9, 1838, at the age of 82. Before his death, he asked Søren to become a pastor. Søren was deeply influenced by his father's religious experience in life and felt obligated to fulfill his wish. Two days later, on August 11, Kierkegaard wrote, My father died on Wednesday. I had so very much wished that he might live a few years longer, and I look upon his death as the last sacrifice which he made to his love for me. He died for me in order that, if possible, I might still turn into something. Of all that I have inherited from him, the recollection of him, his transfigured portrait is dearest to me, and I will be careful to preserve his memory safely hidden from the world. Kierkegaard attended the School of Civic Virtue, excelling at Latin and history. In 1830, he went on to study theology at the University of Copenhagen. But while there, he was drawn more towards philosophy and literature. At the university, Kierkegaard wrote his dissertation on the concept of irony with continual reference to Socrates, which was found by the university panel to be noteworthy and well-thought-out work but a little too wordy and literary for the philosophy thesis. Kierkegaard graduated on October 20th, 1841 with the Magister Artium, which today would be designated a Ph.D. With his family's inheritance of approximately 31,000 rigsthaler, Kierkegaard was able to fund his education, his living, and several publications of his early works. Subsection 1.2 
Regina Olson, 1837-1841. Another important aspect of Kierkegaard's life, generally considered to have had a major influence on his work, was his broken engagement to Regina Olson, 1822-1904. Kierkegaard met Regina on May 8, 1837, and was instantly attracted to her, and she to him. In his journals, Kierkegaard wrote about his love for Regina. Thou sovereign of my heart, treasured in the deepest fastness of my chest, in the fullness of my thought, there, unknown divinity. Oh, can I really believe the poet's tales, that when one first sees the object of one's love, one imagines one has seen her long ago, that all love, like all knowledge, is remembrance, that love, too, has its prophecies in the individual. It seems to me that I should have to possess the beauty of all girls in order to draw out a beauty equal to yours, that I should have to circumnavigate the world in order to find the place I lack, and which the deepest mystery of my whole being points toward, and at the moment you are so near to me, filling my spirit so powerfully that I am transfigured for myself and feel that it's good to be here. Søren Kierkegaard, Journals February 2nd, 1839. On September 8th, 1840, Kierkegaard formally proposed to Regina. However, Kierkegaard soon felt disillusioned and melancholic about the marriage. Less than a year after he had proposed, he broke it off on August 11th, 1841. In his journals, Kierkegaard mentions his belief that his melancholy made him unsuitable for marriage, but his precise motive for ending the engagement remains unclear. It is generally believed that the two were deeply in love, perhaps even after she married Johann Friedrich Schlegel, 1871-1896, a prominent civil servant not to be confused with the German philosopher Friedrich von Schlegel, 1772-1829. For the most part, their contact was limited to chance meetings on the streets of Copenhagen. Some years later, however, Kierkegaard went so far as to ask Regina's husband for permission to speak with her, but Schlegel refused. Soon afterwards, the couple left the country, Schlegel having been appointed governor in the Danish West Indies. By the time Regina had returned, Kierkegaard was dead. Regina Schlegel lived until 1904 and was buried near Kierkegaard in the Assistens Cemetery in Copenhagen. Subsection 1.3 First Authorship, 1841-1846 Although Kierkegaard wrote a few articles on politics, women, and entertainment in his youth and university days, many scholars believe Kierkegaard's first nor noteworthy work is either his university thesis, The Concept of Irony with Continual References to Socrates, which was presented in 1841, or his masterpiece and arguably greatest work, Either Or, which was published in 1843. In either case, both works critiqued major figures in Western philosophic thought, Socrates in the former and Hegel in the latter, showcased Kierkegaard's unique style of writing and displayed a maturity in writing from his works of youth. Either or was mostly written during Kierkegaard's stay in Berlin and was completed in the autumn of 1842. In the same year, either or was published. Kierkegaard found out Regine was engaged to be married to Johann Friedrich Schlegel. This fact affected Kierkegaard and his subsequent writings deeply. In Fear and Trembling, published in late 1843, one can interpret a section in the work as saying, Kierkegaard hopes that through a divine act, Regine would return to him. Repetition, published on the very same day as Fear and Trembling, is about a young gentleman leaving his beloved. Several other works in this period make similar overtones of the kierkegaard Olsen relationship. Other major works in this period focus on a critique of Georg Wilhelm's Friedrich Hegel and form a basis for existential psychology. Philosophical Fragments, The Concept of Dread, and Stages on Life's Way are about thoughts and feelings an individual may face in life, existential choices and its consequences, and whether or not to embrace religion, specifically Christianity, in one's life. 
Perhaps the most valiant attack on Hegelianism is the concluding unscientific postscript to philosophical fragments, which discusses the importance of the individual, subjectivity as truth, and countering that the Hegelian claim that the rational is the real and the real is the rational. Most of the works in this authorship were philosophical in nature and written using a pseudonym and indirectly representing different viewpoints and ways of life. However, Kierkegaard published two or three theological discourses written under his own name for each of the respective philosophical works. Kierkegaard wrote these discourses to clarify philosophical aspects of the pseudonymous work, discuss the theological aspects of the work, and edify the reader. Subsection 1.4, Corsair Affair, 1845-1846. On December 22, 1845, Peter Ludwig Müller published an article critiquing stages on life's way. The article gave stages a poor review, but showed little understanding of the work. Müller was also a contributor of the Corsair, a Danish satirical paper that lampooned people of notable standing. Kierkegaard wrote a response in order to defend the work, ridicule Mole, and bring down the Corsair, earning him the ire of the paper and its editor, Mer Aaron Goldschmidt. The only two articles that Kierkegaard wrote in response to Mule were Activity of a Traveling Aesthetician and Dialectical Result of Literary Police Action. The former focused on insulting Müller's integrity and responding to his critique. The latter was directed assault on the Corsair in which Kierkegaard openly asked to be satirized. With a paper like the Corsair, which hitherto has been read by many and all kinds of people and essentially has enjoyed the recognition of being ignored, despised, and never answered, the only thing to be done in writing in order to express the literary moral order of things reflected in the inversion that this paper, with meager competence and extreme effort, has sought to bring about, was for someone immortalized and praised in this paper to make application to be abused by the same paper. May I ask to be abused, the personal injury of being immortalized by the Corsair is just too much. Søren Kierkegaard Dialectical Result of a Literary Police Action over the next few months, the Corsair took Kierkegaard up on his offer to be abused and unleashed a series of attacks making fun of Kierkegaard's appearance, voice, and habits. For months, he was harassed on the streets of Denmark. In an 1846 journal entry, Kierkegaard makes a long, detailed explanation of his attack on Müller and the Corsair, and also explains that this attack made him quit his indirect communication authorship. The days of my authorship are past. God be praised. I have been granted the satisfaction of bringing it to a conclusion myself, understanding when it is fitting that I should make an end, and next, after the publication of either or, I thank God for that. That at this, once again, is not how people would see it, that I could actually prove in two words that it is so. I know quite well and find my authorship quite in order but it has pained me. It seemed to me that I might have asked for that admission, but let it be. If only I can manage to become a priest, however, much of my present life may have satisfied me. I shall breathe more freely in that quiet activity, allowing myself an occasional literary work in my free time. Søren Kierkegaard Journals March 9, 1846 Subsection 1.5, Second Authorship, 1846 to 1853. Whereas his first authorship focused on Hegel, this authorship focused on the hypocrisy of Christendom. It is important to realize that by Christendom, Kierkegaard meant not only Christianity itself, but rather the church and the applied religion of his society. After the Corsair incident, Kierkegaard became interested in the public and the individual's interaction with it. His first work in this period of his life was Two Ages, a literary review, which was a critique of the novel Two Ages, in some translations, Two Generations, written by Thomasine Christine Gillenberg Ehrensvard. 
After giving his critique of the story, Kierkegaard made several insightful observations on the nature of the present age and its passionless attitude towards life. One of his complaints about modernity is its passionless view of the world. Kierkegaard writes that the present age is essentially a sensible age devoid of passion. The trend today is in the direction of mathematical equality, so that in all classes about so and so many uniformly make one individual. In this, Kierkegaard attacks the conformity and assimilation of individuals into an indifferent public, the crowd. Although Kierkegaard attacks the public, he is supportive of communities where individuals keep their diversity and uniqueness. Other works continue to focus on the superficiality of the crowd, attempting to limit and stifle the unique individual. The book on Adler is a work about Pastor Adolf Peter Adler's claim to have had a sacrilegious revelation and to have suffered ostracization and expulsion from the pastorate as a consequence. As a part of his analysis of the crowd, Kierkegaard realized the decay and decadence of the Christian church, especially the Danish state church. Kierkegaard believed Christendom had lost its way on the Christian faith. Christendom in this period ignored, skewed, or gave mere lip service to the original Christian doctrine. Kierkegaard felt his duty in this later era was to inform others about the shallowness of so-called Christian living. He wrote several criticisms on contemporary Christianity in works such as Christian Discourses, Works of Love, and Edifying Discourses in Diverse Spirits. The Sickness Unto Death is one of Kierkegaard's most popular works of this era, and although some contemporary atheistic philosophers and psychologists dismiss Kierkegaard's suggestion, suggested solution as faith, his analysis on the nature of despair is one of the best accounts on the subject, and has been emulated in subsequent philosophies such as Heidegger's concept of existential guilt and Sartre's bad faith. Around 1848, Kierkegaard began a literary attack on the Danish state church with books such as Practice in Christianity, For Self-Examination, and Judge for Yourselves, which attempted to expound the true nature of Christianity with Jesus as its role model. Subsection 1.6, Attack Upon Christendom, 1854-1855 Kierkegaard's final years were taken up with sustained outright attack on the Danish People's Church by means of newspaper articles published in the Fatherland, Fiederlandet, and a series of self-published pamphlets called The Moment, Ørjeblikket. Kierkegaard was initially called to action by a speech by Professor Hans Lassen Martensen, who called his recently deceased predecessor, Bishop Jakob P. Minster, a truth witness, one of the authentic truth witnesses. Kierkegaard had an affection towards Minster, but had come to see that his conception of Christianity was in man's interest rather than God's, and in no way was Minster's life comparable to that of a truth witness. Before the tenth chapter of The Moment could be published, Kierkegaard collapsed on the street and was eventually taken to a hospital. He stayed in the hospital for over a month and refused to receive communion from a pastor, whom Kierkegaard regarded as merely an official and not a servant of God. He said to Emil Bozen, a friend since childhood who had kept a record of his conversations with Kierkegaard and was himself a pastor, that his life had been of great and unknown suffering, which looked like vanity to others but was not. Kierkegaard died in Frederick's hospital after being there for over a month, possibly from complications from a fall he had taken from a tree when he was a boy. He was interred at the Assistance Kierkegaard in the Nürebro section of Copenhagen. At Kierkegaard's funeral, his nephew Henrik Lund caused a disturbance by pr protesting that Kierkegaard was being buried by the official church, even though in his life he had broken from and denounced it. Lund was later fined. End of section 1. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU free documentation license available at www.gnu.org slash fdl.html.